Hi, welcome to this video in which we will revisit small scale wind turbines that fall in the 1 to 10 kilowatt category and see if things have progressed to make these machines more viable. On this channel Synergy Files we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better more sustainable world. Subscribe today for notification to our latest videos and updates. Many of you might have seen an earlier video on this channel where we discussed six reasons on why large-scale turbine is much superior compared to its small-scale counterpart. In fact, almost a decade ago, small-scale turbines of 1 to 5 kilowatt power rating were driven out of business when it transpired that their output was next to nothing even during the time when they were spinning. The reasons for this low output will be explained later in this video. Over time, both the performance has improved and the costs have slid down. The performance increases mainly due to the trickle down of technology from larger turbines to smaller ones. We will discuss four major technological advancements that is boosting small scale wind turbine industry. On a separate note, micro wind turbines which are rated at 1 kilowatt power or less may have some utility for example in trickle charging batteries on a boat or caravan where there is no other option for an energy source. But overall their output is so low that we cannot expect them to meet any base load of electricity demand. So as a rule, turbine with blade diameters of 1 meter or less should be avoided. The reason being the low amount of energy that they intercept in the first place. This low intercepted energy then has to go through not the most efficient conversion process to be converted into electricity. As a result, the output is not high enough to be of any use. Now let's turn our attention to the turbines in the 1 kilowatt to 10 kilowatt category and see how they have upped their game. The first improvement is in the quality of the blades. It was a common practice among the small turbine manufacturers that in order to reduce the cost they would use polymer blades or use die casted single piece metal blades. Each had its own problems. The wear in plastic and the fatigue in metal blades rendered many of the turbines useless a little while after their installation. Carbon or glass fiber reinforced polymer blades are becoming common in smaller turbines giving them strength and durability. Furthermore, the blade shape for smaller turbines has improved making them much more efficient and quieter. The improved blade shape also allows the turbine to get going at a lower cut-in speed. The second important development for small turbines is the availability of telescopic masts and guide masts that now allow turbine nacelles to be mounted at heights of 10 meters or above. It's common knowledge that the further the distance from the ground, the higher is the wind speed. And there is a cubic relationship between power and wind speed, so the slightest increment in wind speed results in a huge improvement in power. Today, taller masts are available for smaller turbines, which gives their performance a huge boost. Previously, we've noted that wind turbines, particularly on the lower end, were mounted on masts which were much shorter than 10 meters this reduced their performance substantially. We now move to another advancement in small turbines which is the direct drive technology. Now large scale direct drive turbines can be identified with their shorter nacelle. Instead of having a gear system, they have permanent magnet generators and an inverter. In a normal large scale turbine, complex mechanical system is at work. For increasing the speed of the rotor in the generator, a sophisticated gearing system is used. In a direct drive, the complexity of that system is taken out by electrical and power electronic systems. Gearboxes in turbines result in huge maintenance costs. While the majority of small scale turbines do not feature a gearing system, but they also don't have the direct drive system as found in some large scale turbines. Bear in mind that large scale direct drive systems have flatter electrical generators and complex inverter circuits to generate that 50 or 60 hertz output which is required. 
The direct drive circuit allows the 50 or 60 Hz AC output to be generated at a wide range of rotational speeds of the blade. On the other hand, in most small-scale AC wind turbines, such circuits do not exist, so they don't have to just spin but have to spin above certain speeds to have a usable output. As of today, however, quite a few small-scale turbines are offering the same electrical system as their large direct drive counterparts, and this is one of the biggest reasons why small turbines are making a comeback. This brings us to reason number four, which is the variable pitch system used in the blades. It was common practice that small turbines had to be pulled down when wind speed went up to gale force range. Some slightly better systems in small turbines would be equipped with brakes which would stop the turbine completely at very high speeds. This is different to what we see in larger turbines where the variable pitch system allowed the blades to rotate at an angle that would minimize the lift force imparted on the blades, thus reducing the rotational speed of the blades even in very high winds. This technique is called feathering and allowed the turbines to still make use of that high energy in the wind, whereas braking system strategy would mean no output when the energy in the wind was at its peak. Another important thing to note about these variable pitch systems is that they are very complicated with separate small motors housed inside the nacelle to provide the rotational force to tilt the blades. This arrangement is difficult to accommodate in smaller turbines, however some turbine manufacturers have found a clever solution. They have introduced a spring-based mechanism which allows the blades to be rotated back by extreme wind loads. And as the wind load reduces, the spring forces the blade back to their original position. In effect, it is a simple self-regulating system that doesn't require any electrical components to operate. In other words, the turbine's effectiveness is increased with minimal increase in costs. So there we go, we've identified four changes in small turbines that are allowing them to greatly improve their output. They were already useful in farms and areas away from urban centers, but now their utility on building roofs has also increased. If you learned something from the video, please do hit the like button. Add your questions in the comment section. And as ever, thank you for your attention.